the strength and deformability test. So most of the information obtained from the laboratory tests that we conduct substantially related to what? The stress and strain. So when I get to the lab with a rock sample and I want to test to know the strength of it, we are just looking at most of the time the stresses and the strains. So the stress is the load you are applying to your rock material and the strain is the deformation that is occurring when you are applying the stress. So please get the two different, the two things. The stress is the load you are applying or the force you are applying on your material. So for example, if I ask you to carry a bag of cement, the bag of cement becomes the stress that I am exerting you to. Then the strain is how you are going to react when I have placed the bag of cement on your head. That is the strain. Then we have these tests generally perform, they are performed on what? Cylindrical rock samples. And what are we looking for? To evaluate the compressive strength and strain in uniaxial condition. So when I had a rock sample, so if I have a rock sample of this nature and I want to find out axially is along the axis of the rock sample. I want to find out the strength properties of this rock sample like this. That is the compressive strength. So I will exert some force on it and then the rock material will react in opposite direction. When it does that, what will happen is that the rock will begin to expand and this expansion is as a result of the force you are applying at the point A, point A. And then the response of the rock, when you are applying this force A to it, will be at this point B and BB. So this BB reaction is what we are terming as the strain, and this force you are exerting is the compressive stress of the rock or the strength. So the point at which the rock will fail before it fails is the strength. So let's say I place a load or a block on a watermelon. I want to know how many pieces of blocks I can place gently on a watermelon. So as I place it on the watermelon, it does not smash. But then the watermelon will begin to respond in certain direction to show that it is suffering. When I place another and it breaks, the quantity of value or the value I measured from the watermelon before it is smashed is what will be the strength of the watermelon, which means that is the amount of force it can take. So in the future, if I am going to place anything on the watermelon, I must not exceed that inherent strength of it. Then evaluation of the compressive strength and strain in triaxial condition. Triaxial condition is also saying that sometimes our rock within the mines is not the forces that are acting on the rock in the mine in real life, it's not in one direction. They are always acting in several directions. And so there is a test that we call triaxial, meaning three, then uniaxial, meaning one. So here, the uniaxial compressive strain, you are applying force in one direction. But when we come to the triaxial one, you are applying the force here and there, and then there, that is the triaxial. And then at the end of the day, you will observe the deformation that will occur when you apply the forces in three ways. So the uniaxial test 
is performed on core samples, cylindrical core samples, by applying increasing load on it. So we want to look at that. Let me use this figure to explain, to make it faster. So if I have this, okay, this, this cylindrical core sample may be placed in a, a device like this. The device that is used for this test usually looks this way. So I place So I place the material here, the core sample that I want to, or whose strength values I want to determine. I will pick those machine or that particular rock sample and place it under it and exert a load. Okay, so let's start with where my Keza is. So we place a core sample, which is cylindrical in nature just like you see on the screen. And then we apply a force from a plate onto it and set it automatically. And then we have some cables that will be joining this particular rock sample. You know, usually with other construction materials, if you are doing this test and it deforms, you can easily pick it back and measure the deformation later on. But with our rock, once it breaks like this, you can put it together and measure the deformation. And so we measure the deformation simultaneously with the measurement of the strength. And so whilst we are measuring the strength of this rock material, the strain will also be measured alongside. Through some cables we call the strain gauges. And when it smashes, the machine automatically stops. And the value that was measured when the material failed is the strength of the rock. So let's determine or let's understand these two things. So every rock material has what we call the strength. Then we have stress. Then we have strain. So the strength is the property that is existing within the rock, which it uses to fight against this. So when you are applying stress, so for example, if this is the load I am placing on a rock sample, this load is what is giving the stress. Then the property that this rock sample is using to resist the stress that is being applied is the strength. Then, when this was applying the force onto the rock property, every amount of stress that was applied, the rock will show some signs of suffering which we call, deform, we call the deformation. So that science of suffering is what we term as the strain or the deformation. So it will be showing some kind of deformation as you apply the load. And until a certain point where it can no longer bear the load you are applying, then it fails. Please, have you gotten these three things well? Okay. Then we have, this table is just showing us some of the various properties that we can conduct in the laboratory or tests we need to do in order to better understand the rock material. So you can read on them. So we have the shear modulus. So modulus, we have what we call the modulus. We've heard of the Poisson ratio, right? Then we have slave durability, tensile strength. So some of them we will come across them again in the course of this lecture. 